Howdy YouTubers and welcome back to the Holtz Mitchell channel. I'd like to thank all the new subscribers that have come on board and uh, I'd like to thank most of all the loyal subscribers that have continued to subscribe and uh, are continually interested in the subjects that I'm posting here on this channel. <clears throat> Today we're going to be talking about uh, relative humidity which is the driving engine behind your wood drying. Now I'm not going to get too technical as far as the uh, mathematical formulas and all that goes today. Um, there are a couple of guys in YouTube that have, uh, they're some kind of college professors or something like that, and they have all the mathematical stuff in their videos. If you do a, a search in YouTube for relative humidity, you'll find a lot of their material uh, readily, readily available, and uh, they do a, a, a better job in explaining the theory than I could. I'm just out here today to show you <clears throat> what the effects of relative humidity are um, in nature, so to speak. Um, you see in the background here, got a nice wall of fog moving up in through the valley. <clears throat> now, the uh, relative humidity plays quite an important role in your in your drying process in that it carries off uh, the moisture that uh, is in the in the lumber and we know by definition relative humidity is the amount of moisture that the air can take up at a given temperature and so when on mornings like today uh, you meet the dew point where the accumulated moisture uh, from the day before that is still present in the air is actually visible like with this wall of fog moving up out of the valley here um, or in the form of dew because you've reached the dew point. In other words, where the moisture in the air um, exceeds 100% and starts to precipitate out. So how does that affect you as, as a guy drying his lumber? Well, as long as you have your wood uh, protected in some way from moisture from above. Um, so if you have a little roof cap on your, on your stack of lumber, um, this kind of thing doesn't really affect you all that much. Now you will get some water absorption through the air on days like today but the good news is it won't last long and it's usually pretty superficial. So you don't have to worry about well gee is, is my wood going to get you know is the, is the humidity in my wood going to go back up to where it's going to prolong the, the process? No, it, it really won't. Um, it like I said before, the, the, the moisture that the wood will absorb is only superficial and usually during the course of the day that moisture that's accumulated in that outer layer of the wood will usually evaporate off again. Um, you will see some um, precip or um, some condensation on the wood, say on the outside, uh, where you can see it in the discoloration of the, of the, the wood where it actually looks a little darker. Uh, but other than that, that moisture doesn't stay in the wood for very long. Unless, of course, you have, you know, like uh, Dino Guy, he lives up in, in England, and uh, I was looking at his stack, you know, where he uh, stacked up his wood. You have days and, and weeks sometimes of, of continuous rain and, and precip and fog, and so you're going to have uh, a slower rate of drying than you would in, say, like the western United States where the relative humidity is generally pretty low so your wood will still dry it's just going to be a little bit slower going um, so you're going to have to take that into account other than that um, it's really not that big of a deal if you have you know a rain event or something like that 
more fog in this case. So there's some, uh, I'll show you some, some other clips here of uh, visible uh, moisture in the air, like right here with this, uh, with this little clip. So the mist you're looking at in the picture here is uh, visible moisture within the air, which means that the relative humidity has exceeded 100% or is at 100%, i.e. dew point. But as you can see, the, the moisture is floating away and uh, not settling out. Now, some of the mist that we're seeing here uh, off in the distance, let's, let me pan around here, is actually some of the rain. You can see some of the drops coming down in the picture in front of this apple tree here in the foreground. And so uh, this mist is being formed in part by the drops of rain impacting on the leaves of the trees and then two from the evapotranspiration of the trees. Okay we're handheld here a little bit so forgive me if the picture gets a little wobbly. You can see the the fog drifting across the landscape here. And then, of course, coming up out of the valley. I know those aren't chimneys off in the background. Those are new windmills being constructed. Here's a nice little example of dew on the grass. The other thing is to get uh, the sawdust and the debris off your lumber, you know, because that will act as a, a sponge or a wick of sorts and draw in that moisture from the air. Um, it works both ways where it will also give it off, but as a rule it's better just to get the sawdust and the, the little fuzzy things that uh, I'll show you here in a second off the boards and then that way you don't have any additional wicks pulling moisture in to your lumber. Um, so when your relative humidity is high, these little tassels right here will act as a wick and they will draw in moisture to your wood. Same thing with these. So it's fairly important that your lumber is halfway clean, but when you get to looking real close, let's see if we can get in here, the surface of the boards have little slivers sticking up and these two will act as wicks. Uh, that will draw in moisture. Now the good news is that moisture will readily evaporate and take off pretty quick so it's not a lasting effect but uh, for those of you guys who've dragged your wood indoors prematurely you'll notice a spike in the relative humidity of your house. Sometimes the doors start uh, jamming a little bit or you know not opening and closing quite properly um, now the sawdust will also act as a, as a moisture sink again and uh, be a, a good breeding ground for, for molds and stuff like that. Now you have to keep in mind uh, the tree when it pulls water from the ground and turns it into sap, there's a sugar in the sap. Um, of course that's through the photosynthesis and it comes back down from the crown and uh, is distributed out through the tree. And uh, that sugar is food for various uh, fungi, i.e. mold. So you want to make sure you get your board swept off fairly good and uh, make sure that, I mean, you're not going to get it 100%, but, you know, as good as you can anyway. You can take broom and sweep it off or a little hand broom or something like that. And then also pull those little stringer things off um, to, to minimize the, the wick effect of drawing in moisture. So just be aware that uh, when you're drying your wood outside to 
one, keep it covered with some kind of impervious layer on top so that uh, the, the moisture that settles down out of the, out of the air can't accumulate on it. Of course, um, we know the effects of like a, a cold drink on a hot day. Um, here, for example, is uh, a windshield or a window on a car. This picture was taken this morning just on the way out here to, to look at this. Now, th this uh, moisture condenses out because of the temperature differential. You have a, um, a colder object in a warmer layer of air and um, the moisture will condense out. And this has to do with uh, the vapor pressure of water at a given barometric pressure and temperature. Again, a very complicated formula and research is still ongoing on that, although it's been researched and uh, these formulas have been um, proven out time and again. But there are other aspects of the, the, uh, the research going on that uh, are continuing. So, but anyway, I'm not going to bore you with, with all the nitty gritty details of this kind of stuff. If you, if you want to, to know more about it, there's um, a plethora of information in the internet. For those of you who are uh, living up a little farther north and your temperatures aren't quite as uh, high as, say, down south, will your lumber dry any slower? And the answer is no, uh, for the simple fact that uh, relative humidity is just that. It's relative to the temperature and the absorption capability of the air at a given pressure, uh, at a given temperature. So uh, in case of those of you who you know, experience a lot of frost, um, there's this uh, process called sublimination where frozen water will actually uh, go right to a gaseous state. Uh, say like if you're living in, in the interior of Alaska and you have fresh cut lumber, that uh, that will dry, albeit at a slower rate, uh, as it would say if the, the water could go to a liquid state, um, in a process called sublimination. So and it's freeze drying essentially, and yes, your wood will still dry. As a matter of fact, uh, again, this goes into the color retention part of, of this series, so your folks that uh, are in the northern tier who have uh, you know, exceedingly low temperatures, you will experience better color retention of your light woods than you would if, uh, say, you moved it down to a southern climate where uh, you have a lot of fungi, uh, in particular mold spores in the air, and so the uh, mold will then settle in on the wood and attack it and then start to discolor it. But again, that's color retention, so that goes into a, a different realm together altogether. Um, now you guys in the uh, southern states, you will experience different rates depending again on, on the humidity. Now uh, folks like in Louisiana, uh, your wood won't dry uh, quite as fast as it would say in Arizona. Again, relative humidity because the humidity there is higher than it is in say Arizona. Um, the process is going to be a little slower. Doesn't mean it's all necessarily bad. It just uh, it, it also means that, um, again, goes into color retention, that uh, you run a higher risk of, of mold settling in on your wood and making a discoloration. So that's why when you select your stickers, for example, that you use a similar species than, or the same species, preferably out of the same log that you've just cut, or you grab a species that uh, is less prone to uh, discoloration by fungus or mold spores. So um, that's an important point to, to keep in mind when you're in high humidity areas um, because right there at the junction where the sticker meets the wood or um, just right there, uh, the moisture can't escape quite as readily and so you're gonna have a problem with it and that's where your mold is gonna uh, take hold first and then discolor your your uh, valuable lumber. Um, okay, we're handheld here a little bit, so forgive me if the picture gets a little wobbly. You can see the, the fog drifting across the landscape here. I 
and then of course coming up out of the valley and no those aren't chimneys off in the background those are new windmills being constructed now clouds are also another manifestation of uh, relative humidity in the high, upper atmosphere um, off in the distance behind this pole over here or the, the uh, transmission line you can see a stratocumulus cloud rising up um, this is a moisture laden cloud uh, that will form a thunderhead later in the day and uh, it's full of energy and then also a lot of moisture there's that same thunderhead uh, about 15 to 20 minutes later after the first uh, recording of it as you can see it's grown considerably just in the short time that uh, since the since the first initial recording and uh, I imagine this thing will probably be a full-blown thunderstorm by the time mid-afternoon rolls around and there's Mr. Potato Head another 10 minutes later this guy's really growing so mid-afternoon it ought to be getting pretty interesting around here so I hope you guys can kind of get an idea of what relative humidity is how it acts how it how it uh, influences your, your drying process. Um, we've seen the hygrometer, um, which is an instrument that measures your humidity. Um, and of course, I showed you in a previous video, and I'll, I'll flash that up here again. This This is an instrument that uh, measures the, you know, you have the two needles. One shows the temperature, the other the humidity, and then the other, where the two cross in that graph is where uh, the expected humidity of, or moisture content of your wood is going to be. So that's one of these uh, relative humidity, uh, or hygrometers, I should say. And, uh, Well, today's been kind of an absent-minded day for me. I'm, it's after work. I'm pretty beat. So I'm going to head down to the bus and head home and kick my feet up and relax a little bit. So I hope you guys got a little something out of the, uh, the relative humidity, seen some of the visual impacts of relative humidity and how it acts. Um, we've all seen it before. It's just we don't really take it, you know, take it in and, and, and see it for what it is. Um, and a lot of us just see the, the mist in the morning as, you know, kind of a cool thing and all that. So, anyway, if there's something uh, I'm missing in this uh, episode, by all means, leave a comment in the comment section below. I'm always open for suggestions and uh, welcome any comments that come along uh, for improvements. So, um, hope you guys enjoyed the show and thanks for stopping by.